Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Damian Curry. I'm one of the technical solutions architects here at Nginx. And uh, today, I was just wanted to talk a little bit about the different things and you know how you can do handle auto scaling and actually touching on some of the same points that were just mentioned in the last talk. So, and just you know what we can do in AWS. We've been working really hard on some cool stuff. Um, so you know, just to get started. As I'm sure a lot of you are aware, about 40% of all websites running in AWS are running Nginx. So it's already a very, very common thing where a lot of people have Nginx running in many different ways in AWS. And so we were just kind of looking at, you know, how do you how do you do this? How do you build these scalable applications in AWS? So out of the box, you have a lot of tools. Amazon provides a lot of different tooling to prov to do a lot of different things all across the board but you know at the very high level you have things like route 53 which is a dns service that can also offer global server load balancing which obviously is very helpful in uh, building scalable large-scale applications and then we also have you know things like the elastic load balancer for you know the original basic layer 7 load balance or i mean sorry layer 4 load balancing and then the new application load balancer which is doing the more complex layer seven load balancing, which is also uh, based on Nginx open source. So that's always an interesting one. And then of course we have Nginx plus, which you know, with the flexibility really comes down to being one of the most advanced load balancers available in, in, in AWS that can be used in conjunction with ELB, ALB, and a lot of other things. So the big question is, how do you do it? How do all these, how do you take all these different technologies and combine them together in such a way that you have the flexibility of working in the cloud and also that gives you the benefit of not having to be 100% require 100% needed to use AWS. So you have the option to port some of this functionality if you have an issue with AWS and you need to go to a different cloud provider, you know, how can we go about doing that to give you that flexibility? So the first thing we're going to talk about is just the uh, quick start guide that we provided from Nginx. We just rolled out version two. And so this is a really nice system that builds you a pretty end-to-end -end infrastructure here. So as it starts, you can see it's broken up into two availability zones through a single AZ. Um, you have a, a you have a elastic load balancer sitting at the edge that is then load balancing to different Nginx plus instances that are in an auto scaling group. And then behind that, we have a group of auto scaling web applications that then go ahead and communicate with Nginx and leverage our auto scaling group plugin that allows you to do to keep Nginx in sync with what is running in AWS on the fly completely offhand. So then you can combine that existing architecture with the Route 53 global server load balancer to give you true, you know, uh, cross region, highly, highly available support using the geographical load balancing so that you can have your end users sent to the nearest data center to them. So that way, you know, you don't have to worry, you're not relying on a single AZ, you're not re even relying on a single region. You're able to spread your infrastructure out get it as close to your customers and you know give them the best end user experience possible. Oh, but we'll take a break here. So the quick start on AWS, it's super straightforward. So we can just go ahead and quickly deploy this guy. AWS will load for me. So we'll go ahead and uh, change this just for fun. All right, so it already has the, the template file selected. So we'll just go ahead and give it a name in case there's nothing, something else running in here. And so it's very straightforward. Now, the one thing that you keep in, keep in mind, in this situation, it's not a big deal because there are only two AZs. Uh, currently, this, this setup only can support two AZs with the quick start out of the box. So, you know, you can just select your AZs you want to run in, define the different subnets you want. So this is going to go ahead and create a VPC for you put it in a, into uh, all the different subnets you want. You can define your own IP space and all that fun stuff. And you just go ahead and you know set all the keys. Obviously, because we're dealing with um, a certain amount of auto scaling group, you can set the different capacities you want right off the bat, just like in any other auto scaling situation. And then, of course, we just keep going. We gotta make sure we give it a roll. All right. And that is it. So now we can kick this off. Oh, and then that happens. <laughs> okay, so that helps if I define an IP address. So 
we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go back here one. Oops. Next. All right. And, you know, not doing the secure thing and walking it down to an IP address. Instead, we'll just let it run everywhere. All right. So now this is all going. So we can watch here and it will take a little while and it's slowly spinning up. So we'll, we'll come back to that later and we'll give you an idea of what it looks like when it's running all together. So then what are your options for HA? Obviously, you need to have HA. There's, there's no way around it. You need to have make sure everything's highly available. And there's a few different ways you can go about doing that in AWS. So the primary, you know, original kind of idea of doing this is just simply put an ELB in front of the Nginx Plus instances. That gives you the ability to have a scalable Nginx behind an ELB that provides you your ingress point for your outbound traffic and allows you to scale horizontally as traffic traffic comes up or down. So you can just go ahead and spin up instances as you need them. So in this, you're using the ELB for that basic ing ingress point, giving you the high availability across multiple availability zones. And then also allows you to do the, you know, the auto scaling. And again, because it's Amazon AWS, it integrates very well into all of the different services. And then at that point, you're using Nginx Plus for the layer seven request routing. Uh, you know, you can have a centralized place to handle everything, you know, better SSL, all of that fun stuff. So we've got a lot of features there that just aren't available in any other Amazon service for this sort of uh, use case. The second option is to use the global server load balancer. So this can be used in a few different ways. You can configure it in a situation like this where you simply have Nginx plus instances running in different regions and then use that Amazon Route 53 to balance across those instances. Also, you can see as we were showing in the previous slide, you can also use them to load balance uh, Route 53 to an ELB, and then from the ELB, it will spread the load out there. So you have a couple different options depending on if you're looking to you know, cut down all the costs, try to limit all of your AWS costs as you can, and you know, remove the ELB from that mix. It just gives you a few different options there. And then of course, we, we do offer, also offer some active passive settings. So we have a one solution that leverages keep alive D. So the standard way that I'm sure everybody's very familiar with doing active passive failover in a data center, you're just using uh, running keep alive D over VRRP with some customized scripts. Um, we actually have the ability now to either do it with an elastic IP, or you can also do it with an internal IP address. If you're using a VPC and you want all that traffic to be internal only, you do have that ability to use either one of those. Uh, the other big plus size, it allows you to use a static endpoint. So you don't have that uh, IP address changing at random out from under your ELB. If you have a requirement where you can't use DNS and you need to hard code an IP address somewhere, it gives you that flexibility so you don't have to worry about that IP address changing and breaking your traffic. And then of course, it allows you to use any DNS provider. You can host your own DNS because you're not, re you're not relying on Route 53 for anything. Um, the other solution is using Nginx Plus with Lambda, and uh, you use Lambda to manage the monitoring and util and changing the IP address from one instance to the other. So it's just kind of two ways of doing it. The uh, Lambda solution is a fully supported from our professional services team. So if you have any problems, they're always there to help you if you need if you need it. And now the big thing here, and this is something we've been working on for a while, we've, we've released a version uh, of our auto scaling group integration. And pretty much what it allows you to do is, in the past, this was the kind of standard way to integrate Nginx Plus with auto scaling groups. By default, that auto scaling group is gonna come up, set and put those instances into an ELB group, and Nginx would route the traffic to those ELBs. So it, it's, you know, it works, it allows you to, you know, you, you can use the Nginx Plus resolver functionality to not have to worry about that IP address changing because Nginx will update it if it does. But with our auto scaling group integration, it allows you to take that ELB hop out of the mix. And that way it, you pretty much run a daemon on the Nginx Plus node that will communicate with the AWS auto scaling group endpoint and keep track of what is currently running what's currently running in Nginx, and then make the changes out as necessary on the fly. So we're using the uh, 
uh, the dynamic reconfiguration API in Nginx Plus to do that communication. And so now the current it, the current version we have out in the world that we have published has just basic support for auto auto scaling group. Uh, what we're playing with today here is a new version that hopefully we'll be releasing soon that extends that support to not only auto scaling groups but Elastic Container Services and uh, regular EC2 instances. So now we can go back over here and we'll actually look at the fun stuff. So what we have here, I have a basic little application here and we have an Nginx server with three different upstream groups. We have an auto scaling group, uh, ECS group, and an EC2 group. So what we're actually doing here, and I can, we can show this real quick. I'm not sure if you guys can read that okay. It might be a little bit better. So you can see the, the configuration here is pretty straightforward. What we're doing is we're defining the name of the different groups. Uh, we are calling it the auto, we're referencing and saying this is an auto scaling group and the name is an old auto scaling group that I left running. So I reused it for this demo, hence why it says velocity. So that's an old one. Um, and then you, you know, just def define the port that that auto scaling group listens on and the, uh, what type of traffic it is. And so what you're doing here is when you define this name, that is the name of an upstream group that is in your Nginx config. So when the plugin is checking these, it will then check against the upstream config and look for any changes that have happened. And then again, you can do the same thing here. So with, with the uh, straight EC2 instances, you're able to define any of the fields that you would like. So in this one, I'm using the name field and just simply doing if anything, has a name that matches conf-demo-ec2, it will go ahead and add it to the EC2 backend group. And then finally, the ECS one, even simpler, you're just defining the name of your uh, contain the last container service and then the actual service that you're looking at. And just, again, this what type of traffic it's going to be. So this will actually go ahead and allows you to use multiple instances of an application on the same ECS host because it allows you and it will check for each individual uh, each individual port that that instance is listening on. So instead of things with the ELB where you had to you know, say, okay, this container listens on port 80, every container has to listen on port 80, this gives you the ability to go ahead and you know, really have the flexibility to use whatever you need there. Oh, oh. and now of course AWS just changed my IP address, okay. One second here, we'll get my access back. They keep changing my IP on me. There we go. We'll change this later. Nobody will look at this and try to break into our AWS later on, but I will lock this down in a bit. Okay. There we go. Okay, now that we got that back. So now we can see, we can just go ahead and uh, run some basic commands here. So we can see right now we have the ECS backend you can see there that has one instance running. I'm gonna go ahead and kick it off, tell it to build another five. Um, and you can see here, uh, as I said, this is a new version. So you can see it is already picking up the changes and throwing a little bit of extra errors out, but that is because it's in there. So you can see that that has gone ahead and you can see it's updated there. And if we look over here on the screen, it's those, all those hosts are already in the, in the group. So it's, it's very fast with the uh, auto scaling group or the ECS, it is very, sorry. Okay. okay. And then we can also do the same thing with the uh, auto scaling groups here. So you can see with the auto scaling groups, So when we bring up a new auto scaling group, obviously it's gonna take a little bit longer for those to, to populate because we're not just spinning up a container, we're actually going to spin up an entire instance. And uh, the, the previous speaker touched on this fact. So the upside is when you're doing this, you're going to see the instances get added to the configuration much sooner than they're actually there. As soon as those, uh, as soon as those nodes are in the EC2 console, Nginx is going to see that and it's gonna go ahead and add them to that auto scaling group. And then with the health checks, it will not actually route any traffic to them until they're healthy. 
So you don't have to worry about having a server coming online and having traffic routed to it beforehand. So instead of, instead of using the auto-scaling groups with ELB, where they have to come up and then wait for all of the different Amazon checks to be passed, which is happening not as frequently, it will go ahead and the second that the comes up, oh, yep, there we go. So you can see in the time that it took for those to come up, only one of the instances, and now they're all up. So you can see it happens pretty quickly there, but it really gives you that flexibility. And as you go up and down, you don't have to worry about it. Nginx will just sit there and wait and uh, go ahead and keep everything in sync for you. And that way you can just, you know, let Amazon auto scaling do its thing and not have to worry about it. So that's uh, about all I got. Um, any questions? All right. Well, I think everybody's trying to get to the happy hour here. So uh, we'll, let you, we'll let you go a couple minutes early and go grab some beer. Thank you guys very much.